welcome to Jan Saga uh, here with us today. And uh, first of all, thanks for being uh, here uh, with uh, sharing uh, for good. Uh, would you like to tell us uh, first, uh, first of all, uh, how was the season uh, just ended? Well, this season's been very, very good. You can see behind me here that we've got the Coppa Italia, uh, Super Coppa, and the, uh, the uh, league title. So, uh, tripletta, as they say in Italian. Uh, it's just been very, very good. Uh, although the, 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 the league is very strong now in Italy. Uh, before years gone by, there was only two teams. There was always fighting for the title. Uh, whereas this year, it's been any one of four teams that could have won the title this year. Uh, thankfully, we come out on top. Uh, plus, these uh, trophies here, we also finished third in Europe. Uh, so obviously the Eurozone is the uh, strongest zone in the world. So uh, to finish third in that is quite an accomplishment as well. So I'm very, very happy. Obviously, obviously if you win uh, three titles, uh, you can't ever complain. And uh, as you just said, uh, you arrived uh, third in uh, Champions League Final Four. And uh, how was your experience in Europe this year? Well, it's a, it's a new format. It uh, started last year and it's continued again this year. Uh, they refined it slightly. It was uh, a lot more fluid this year. And certainly the, the best four teams in Europe were there uh, in the final four. So every team there were of world class standard, uh, full of players uh, that, you know, are, are captains of all the best players in the world uh, were taking part in this uh, Champions Cup. Uh, in my experience personally, it was a great weekend, you know, as an athlete, uh, you know, it's the daily grind, uh, every day, you have to train in the morning, train in the evening, eat right, sleep right, uh, but when we go away to these, these sort of tournaments, it's all so quick, uh, you get there, you eat, you train, you play, you sleep, eat, train, play, straight away, so uh, you know, in two, three days, fly by, uh, the, quality of, the quality of basketball, uh, was, you know, as I said, world class. Uh, because our first game we played from Dorsa, um, Illulion, last year's champions, uh, they're from Madrid. And um, everybody thought that we were big underdogs, everybody thought that, do you know what I mean, Madrid would, would smash us. And uh, we, we lost the game, but we were there, we were fighters, do you know what I mean, we didn't, uh, we didn't roll over and die. Uh, we put a real good showing and that's what you want. I, I'm not disappointed when I lose a game. I'm disappointed when I, we, the team, doesn't perform well. And in that team game, we performed very, very well. Do you know what I mean? We could have won it. We, we almost won it. Uh, so I can't have any regrets about that because uh, we fought, we put on a good performance, uh, but in the end, we just, we narrowly missed out and then they won the game. And then obviously, to uh, play the second game, third, fourth place, we finished third. Uh, it's against uh, Landil, who I think they've won the Champions Cup now maybe eight or even ten times. Uh, so they, they know the tournament very, very well. And uh, we beat them to finish third, third in Europe. So, uh, once again, it's like our domestic season. You can't have no complaints if you put a real good show in, and if you put a real good performance in, you can never be upset. So uh, I'm very, very happy with how that went as well. And uh, how would you describe the quality of the game within uh, Europe? Uh, it is, is it uh, getting better, more competitive, or uh, and uh, is the gap between uh, Group A, uh, Group A, and Group B uh, nation narrowing down? Well, within Europe, Europe has the best leagues. Um, Spain, Germany and Italy and uh, as you can see from the Champions Cup there was two from Germany, one from Spain and then one from Italy. Um, so the quality is rising. All the best players from you know, America, Australia, uh, they're all attracted to these European leagues uh, because they are the, most, the strongest in the world. Uh, they are the most uh, professional, have the best organisations, have the most fans, uh, certainly us here in Brientea, uh, in Italy, um, do you know I mean? we can pull in maybe 4,000 fans uh, for one game of wheelchair basketball and you know that's, 
that's a game changer. If we can get crowds like that more regular, um, it's only going to make wheelchair basketball better. So, throughout Europe, this is happening. The teams are getting more sponsorship and getting more money, bringing better players in, better facilities, uh, better support staff, strength and conditioning. So, do you know what I mean? Slowly, slowly, step by step, the level of athlete and uh, the, the level of the sport is rising. Uh, with regards to international basketball, uh, unfortunately, there is a gap between uh, League A and League B. Uh, but also, there is a gap between, let's say, the top six or seven teams and the bottom four within, within League A. Uh, because, it, again, it's the, the profile of the sport, uh, countries, the, the governing bodies and the, the sports, national sport governing bodies within each country and now so I started to take notice of wheelchair basketball because it's it's a great sport. Do you know what I mean? It's a rough, tough, and it really is. It's a sport. Uh, the uh, disability is, is secondary uh, within wheelchair basketball now. So these countries are they're putting more money into it, more money into uh, research, uh, development of the wheelchairs, and uh, putting more coaching time with the athletes. So what's happening is you're getting a better, better class of athlete. Uh, but then again, as I say, it's the, the top six, maybe seven teams are now doing that and slightly pulling away from the other four or five just below them in Group A. And then in Group B, uh, again, there's just a sort of slight drop off. Uh, but many years gone by, it was a top three, a top three or four. Now it's, as I said, six or seven. So hopefully six or seven within the next few years will be... 8, 9, 10, and that can spread out as one team gets more professional, it drags the one up below it, and then he drags the one up below it. So it's just a knock-on effect. So uh, hopefully, Richard Basketball, the sport as a whole, can carry on in that direction, and it's, uh, it's only going to get better. So uh, why, according to you, in certain countries, uh, wheelchair basketball is getting more and more popular, popular uh, while uh, in other countries? Uh, the game uh, is uh, still not followed uh, as uh, yeah. Well, it's, if you ask me, it's down, to, it's down to money and the country's perception of sport. Um, because if one country um, has a public or government funding to fund sport, to fund any sport, able-bodied sport or disabled sport, uh, they will put more money into it to make it better, get better facilities, as you said, more training staff. And then, the, for me, the premium disabled sport is wheelchair basketball. Because it's such fast-paced, you do have to be an athlete to play, uh, it's exciting to watch. So, after a country has used its funding and um, its, um, its I haven't said volume, it's, um, once it's used its funding for all able-bodied sports, the next logical stop, uh, step is disabled sport, and the first sport within disability is wheelchair basketball. So we need times for I don't know, developing countries or countries that are not traditionally very good uh, at sport as a nation. They are improving all their able-bodied sports, and then they'll move into wheelchair uh, wheelchair sports, and in fact all disability sports. So uh, fingers crossed. Everybody is going to get there and will get there. It's just um, different countries need a little bit more time.